Are you recording? Yep. Hello everyone, my name is Roxanne Molino and I am Ojibwe. I am the daughter of Tom Molino, First Nation from Bear Island Reservation. I'm also the Indigenous Outreach Manager at GROW. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee. This territory is, the, is covered by the Upper Canada Treaty and is within the land protected with the Dish with One Spoon Wampa Agreement. We are working closely with our Indigenous community to advocate for a just food system and to create a community food program that is cultural, relevant, diverse, equitable, and inclusive. I'll now turn it over to Brian so we can start cooking. Miigwech. Thank you, Roxanne. Um, again, I really appreciate the fact that we can acknowledge the place that we meet here in these lands that we uh, get to meet on. So it's great that we have this space to meet online as well and share in this delicious food. So I'm Brian. I, I know that we kind of rehearsed a little bit, but I don't mind introducing myself quickly. Um, I am the founder and director of Permaculture Live. And Permaculture Live represents um, me taking accountability for my own existence and that of my children using the ethics of permaculture, which are earth care, people care, and future care. And the people care component is where GROW and the Community Food Literacy Center just down the street from me integrates into this really nicely because I do believe that um, if we can protect our people, we can protect our planet. And one of the best ways of doing that is through food. And so I'm thrilled that I get to share this month with Grow in the community there, sharing really delicious, wholesome uh, plant-based meals with you folks. And so today we're gonna start with um, a portobello carbonara and it's super delicious. It's extremely simple. So I'm excited that I get to share something that is uh, quick, easy, convenient, and we'll leave you and your family members um, satisfied with a really delicious meal that is low on um, carbon emissions. So you're sequestering carbon by using uh, plants and eating those. And it's also really good for your body. So I'm glad that I get to do that with you folks. So we're gonna start right away with um, grabbing your cashews. We're gonna put those in some water. You should have a one cup bag of cashews and put those in some water, put them on the stove and boil them for 15 minutes. So we'll do that right away. And feel free if you have any questions, obviously, um, you can put comments in the chat box or you can just uh, go ahead and blurt out something if you need anything. So please do that. And I'm gonna get these cashews going. The cashews are the most uh, intensive of the things that we're going to do. So that's that's as uh, long of something that we have to concentrate on uh, while we're cooking. The next thing is you can go ahead and grab that uh, portobello mushroom that you have. If you are like me, or maybe you're not, maybe you're like some others that don't like mushrooms, but if you're like me and you um, want more mushroom flavor in your food, I would um, just suggest cutting up a few more and making it a little more uh, robust with that mushroom flavor. But if you don't, one giant portobello mushroom, you can slice that up. Once you cut up your mushrooms, you can just place them into a medium to large mixing bowl. It just depends on what your 
comfortable with that you'll place it into the mixing bowl. And I'm gonna put just one more mushroom in mine because I like to have a lot of mushrooms. So I'm do that. The other thing you'll get out is your uh, clove of garlic. You should have like a, a clove that you would have gotten in the um, box when you're participating. You'll need either five cloves or more, depending on what you're um, into. And I'm gonna use this whole clove of garlic for my um, mix here. So go ahead and cut and um, get those cloves unwrapped and put them into your sliced mushrooms in the bowl. And they'll just go in whole. If you like your garlic cooked a little more um, thoroughly or, you know, some people don't like raw garlic, the smaller you cut it up, the better it's gonna be when it goes into the oven. We should also set our ovens to 400 degrees at this time too. Okay, so uh, garlic is uh, ready to go in the bowl. I have the mushrooms all sliced in now. Um, if anybody needs more time, just let me know. Otherwise, we're gonna move on to the actual uh, marinade that we're gonna put onto this mix. So you will need five tablespoons of the soy sauce. So if you can get out your uh, soy sauce, Now, if you're going to do any more of the cooking series throughout the month, you'll definitely be using the soy sauce, the maple syrup, um, and some of the other ingredients that you'll gather um, in the next couple of weeks. So just be sure to hold on to that stuff. So five tablespoons, one, two, three. Okay. 
then you need one and a half tablespoons of the maple syrup. I did see, uh, Maya, you had sent me a message. I'm sorry that I didn't get to it before this. I saw it right before this, but somebody was asking about if, what you could replace your maple syrup ingredient with um, if for whatever reason you're not able to use maple syrup. Um, you could use uh, agava or any kind of sweetener, I, I would say. Maybe brown sugar would actually work really well in what we're doing because um, this is a marinade. So one and a half tablespoons of maple syrup. Because this is a marinade, we can uh, just assume that it, most of it's gonna be cooked off anyway. So if you have something that could coat whatever it is that we're putting in the oven, that'll be a good replacer. So for those of us curious about that. And then, um, let's see. Oh, much. oh, one and a half tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And then one and a half tablespoons of olive oil. Okay, once all that's done, you'll wanna turn or mix everything together, really coat your um, mushrooms, make sure that they got a, a nice glaze on them. Once all of that is done, we're gonna go ahead and put them onto a baking sheet and put them in the oven uh, at 400. And that'll just bake until we're ready to pull them out and put them into our actual carbonara mix. So you can, once you get that all marinated, tossed, go ahead and put those onto a baking sheet. So once you put them on the baking sheet, you can uh, pour out all the marinade that it's been sitting in or that you tossed it in. You can put that onto your baking sheet as well because um, you'll wanna cook that and get that as concentrated as possible because once we make the sauce, we're gonna actually toss in that juice. Oh, that looks really great. Oh my goodness, look at how nice that looks. Delicious. Here, we can show you what's going on over here. Okay. Those are mine. It looks like it looks like you got a family there that you're feeding. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh, look at how good that is. Okay, so you can toss that stuff into the oven once you get that on a pan, on a sheet, I should say. Okay, so this is where it gets a little loud. Um, and perhaps it's maybe the easiest part. If you have a food processor or you have one of those high powered mixers, or even if you have a blender, you can use any of that stuff, but you'll need to get that out at this time because you'll need that to make the actual sauce or at least to whip up the sauce. You should have received uh, or picked up some tofu when you were at center this weekend. Perfect. Excellent. Great. So it asks for silken tofu. 
I've tried it with everything from medium to extra firm. It does, it really doesn't matter because it's going into a mixer and that is gonna really blend it and whip it up. But you'll need 150 grams of your tofu. So not a whole block of tofu. You'll just need maybe a third uh, of that actual block. So go ahead and cut out a third and drop that into your mixing apparatus, whatever it is, if you're using a blender or a food processor. Now, one of the really great things about what we're making is it doesn't look like there's a lot of uh, substance here, but it is packed with protein. It's a lot, a lot of protein. So you're looking at um, easily a hamburger plus worth of protein in just one serving of what you're getting in this pasta carbonara. Now, if you think about the environmental impact that we're saving, what we're doing, why I choose to eat this way is from the environmental impact. Um, to think about how much water goes into processing or creating a piece of beef or another piece of meat is startling. It's actually quite alarming of the amount of water that it takes to create meat. So if my uh, behavior helps with water, uh, conservation and likewise just creates a healthier planet. And that's why I choose to focus on a plant-based diet. But there's a lot of other reasons. Everybody comes to diet or food for various purposes, but that is why I choose to eat this way. Um, and it may not work for everybody, but that's my background and why I came to this conclusion. So I'm going to get my tofu in and then I'm going to get a cup and a half of um, plant-based milk. I like to use oat milk, so I'm gonna go get that quick. We should uh, start to also get our water going, our boiling water for our pasta. So if you want to, if you have yet to do that, you'll want to get your water boiling or get it warming up for that. Okay, so that was uh, the timer for the cashews. So you can go ahead and remove those from the heat, set them aside. We're gonna get ready to strain those and then we'll put those into our mix that we're putting together with the plant-based milk and the tofu. So be sure you have your water going. Um, go ahead and remove the cashews from the heat. And then once you've done that, strain those and you can drop the strain cashews into your blender or into your mixer. That's one cup of cashews boiled going into your blender or your mixer. I'm just going to go get my pasta.
Now for me, sometimes I have my kids around when I'm making this. So in this instance, I don't. So I'm not gonna make a full 300 um, grams of pasta. I'm not gonna cook that. I'm gonna just cook enough for myself. But if you have a family, you know, certainly do that. Um, the sauce can be stored. So once we make it, you can save it and you can use it at a later date. So think about other ways, always when I'm cooking, I'm always trying to figure out ways to uh, steal from one and make another dish. So perhaps using this carbonara sauce, you could incorporate into like a baked lasagna or a baked uh, pasta dish or something else in the future. So you don't have to stick with this specific application. You could look at other ways of doing that. So make sure your water's going. Go ahead and put your pasta in that you need for your meal. Otherwise the rest of it can be saved. Pinch of salt in there. Mushrooms are looking great. All right, so we have cashews, silken tofu, the plant-based milk. There are um, little bags of the nutritional yeast. You'll wanna go ahead and put that into your mix as well. So you can just open up your bag and drop in the one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Now, my journey to this diet is coming from a place of being uh, an environmentalist, but originally, as with most people, when something changes in their life, a, a dramatic change, a lot of things happen. And I um, came down the path of meditation and ultimately my meditation brought me to being vegetarian. And next thing you know, I'm looking at all these different ingredients, trying to figure out what they all mean. And I've seen nutritional yeast before, but until I started using it, incorporating into my diet, I didn't realize the benefits of it. So you can use it as a, like a, a potato topping. It can be really great. Give it a cheesy flavor. Um, it can thicken your sauces. So if you make a gravy and you wanna add a little bit of thickener to it, put some nutritional yeast in it. There's a lot of ways you can experiment to see how, um, I like to put it on baked potatoes or put it on fried potatoes. It's really great there too. So. I would be curious to know if you've ever experimented with it to share that with me. It'd be really great to know. Um, anyway, now it's, I'm gonna put you guys on mute. What I would suggest is uh, for the next couple of minutes, go ahead and go to your blender, whip this as basically as fine and as um, whipped as you can get it. Mix it as well as you can in those two minutes. If you need more time, take that, but um, you can't go wrong. You can't mix it too long. So go ahead and do that now. Um, and then in just a few moments, we're going to take a couple of tablespoons of the water, the broth that's from the pasta, and we're going to incorporate that into the mix, blend it one more time, and then we're pretty close to being done. So I'm going to put you guys on mute. I'll be right back.
So this is uh, what I've got inside my mixer, or inside my uh, blender here. It's uh, definitely whipped, kind of has the, the texture of a milkshake. So you can see all those air pockets. So that's really what I'm looking for. Get some whipness going on there. Keeping an eye on the pasta. Getting very close to it all being finished. Now we'll get the final things going. Does anybody need any more time? Just, uh, yeah, it does look creamy. It's very creamy, exactly. So if anybody needs any more time, please let me know. Otherwise, what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna get the topper. So in the ingredients, it recommends either arugula or parsley. I'm gonna share with you folks that if you go with the parsley, as many of you might know, it's a bit of a spicier herb. So if you're gonna put it into the, your, uh, your mix, just be ready that that's the kind of flavor you're gonna get. I would recommend starting a little lighter with the parsley and building, adding it to your meal if you like the flavor. The other bit is arugula. Now I eat a lot of arugula. So I have this in the house. If I have, to, what I'll do is um, I've done it both ways with parsley and with arugula. I'm gonna go with arugula because I like the nutty flavor that it has. It goes really well with like the maple syrup. Um, so in any case, that's what I'm gonna go with but you have parsley and if you have arugula, those are two really good options. Just be aware that when you add that stuff to it, it's gonna change the dimension of the flavor a little bit. So just go light on it and see what you like, what you're comfortable with. So go ahead and get your topper, your, either your arugula or your parsley ready while your pasta is finishing up and while those mushrooms are finishing in the oven. Okay, so if you have your topper done, you have it either your parsley cut up or your arugula and stuff washed. I mix everything in chopped part, fresh chives. Awesome, that looks great. Awesome, thanks, Gwen. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and head to your pasta. You'll wanna take just a tablespoon to two tablespoons of the actual liquid that's in the sauce. Now, the reason why this is a old tradition, you're taking a bit of the, pasta sauce, the, the starch that's in it, you're putting it into, or I'm sorry, you're putting the starch that's in the water, the pasta is being cooked in, you're putting it into the sauce. And what that does is when you end up mixing the pasta noodles with the sauce, it creates a binding reaction. So the sauce really pulls and sits well with the pasta. So that's what you're doing right now. Go ahead and get a couple of tablespoons of that. Go ahead and keep an eye on your pasta as well. Make sure it's um, al dente, nice and soft. Got a little bit of a chew. Very close to being done. So that's perfect timing. Um, once you put your tablespoon to two tablespoons of water into your mixer, go ahead and mix that again. So I'm gonna put you guys on mute. This will only take about 30 seconds, so I'll do that. Okay, so if you are at this phase, 
the last thing we're going to do, or very close to the last thing, I should say, is you're going to go and you're going to grab the, the snap peas, those peas, the bag of peas that you have, and you need to get a cup of frozen peas. You're going to put it into the pasta directly. Now those peas only take just a minute or two. So your pasta should be also very close to being done when you do that. I know mine is because I've tasted it. Okay, so now we're going to strain our pasta. We're also going to pull out the mushrooms. They should, judging by what I see in my oven, uh, they're very, very close to being done or they should be done. So you can go ahead and pull out your uh, mushrooms and set those on the stove. Hopefully everybody's is kind of looking similar. Keep that sauce because that's or the juice that you have left over on your pan, your bake, baking sheet that's going to go into your sauce. Set that over there. Okay, so your uh, pasta noodles with the peas, it should just be pretty simple, cooked in the same pan. So I have that done. I'm just gonna put those right back onto the heat. Now, this is where it gets really exciting because we're just moments away from tasting our delicious meal. Um, what you'll do is you're gonna take the sauce that I have in the mixer, I'm gonna put that into the pan with the pasta and the peas. Now don't pour it all in because maybe like myself, I don't have a full thing of pasta. So make sure you pour enough to your own liking. So you're gonna pour your sauce into your pasta with the peas. And then after that, add everything that's with the mushrooms into that pot. So go ahead and do that now. So for me, I put about half of what I made into the actual pot itself. And then I'm gonna take these mushrooms and the juice that they've been cooking in. I'm gonna pour that into the pan. Perfect.
No, I really love, I love how portobello mushrooms come out and just look so smoky and rich and just delicious. So anyway, that's, that's my own take on it. But you can see in this pan, I have the sauce, I have the noodles, I have the peas, I have the mushrooms, everything's there. So now, again, like I shared, we're just moments away. I'm gonna take it all and I'm just gonna mix it. I'm gonna mix it. And once I get it all mixed in there, I'm gonna put it back onto the heat. And I'm just gonna let it simmer for a moment. And then you, my friends and myself, we are there. So I'm gonna put that back on there, let it simmer quick. Get it up to a little bit of a simmer. While that's going on, I'll get my, I like to eat out of a big bowl. So I'm gonna get that ready because I'm a big boy. <laughs> so I'll get that. Um, I have this. Got my sauce cooking. Now I feel, because I've made this a few times, I think it's pretty important to try and get that, uh, that smokiness, that so if you use the soy sauce and the mushrooms, that's a really great way of getting that smoky flavor into this pasta. Because as you can imagine, somebody that's also been a meat eater for majority of his life, um, there are things that I do miss. And that is, you know, a, a smoky, meaty flavor is, uh, as crazy as it sounds, is something that uh, I do reminisce about. So now that I've got all of my stuff together, I'm just going to plate it because we're there. Is anybody else not at a plating position? Any questions, any hiccups along the way? No? Maybe? Okay, so I'm gonna load my plate up with my pasta. So Brian, I have um, uh, mixed my one portobello with um, uh, about half uh, butternut squash that I diced. So I've, I've got the mushrooms, the garlic, the butternut squash, they're all in the oven. And the squash is going to need about another three to five minutes. But the smell is driving me crazy. Oh, excellent. And you, you were uh, mentioning other things to do with the nutritional yeast. Uh, there's a fantastic macaroni and cheese that one can make with, with no animal products at all. And that uses nutritional yeast. Yep, I, I, I often get asked, um, and I, and I can't, I'm not a dietitian, so I can never explain what it is, but people say, you know, what are, you're going to miss out on something, your, your diet's lacking. And I, and I know that nutritional yeast offers some important vitamins, B12s, um, protein. So in its little bit of what it does, it's a very impactful, uh, food resource or thing to utilize when you're cooking. So thank you for sharing that. Now, I do use a lot of nutritional yeast, especially in sauces. Yeah, it's great. I love it. I love it. A cheesy sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Any, any other questions or anything that's going on on your side, folks? I'm going to uh, put my arugula on, but I think my plate is pretty much all set. So this is what we're looking at here, folks. Now, um, I've also had you guys on Permaculture Live while I've been recording, so I should show them. They haven't had the privilege of the mute. Oh, look at look at that. Are you using a like fetid? That is what it was the flat. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. All right. So I'm going to dive in here. Now, if you guys have the recipes in front of you, there's um, links to where I've come to find these specific recipes. 
The one that we're working out of today is out of a cookbook called Bosch. It's a couple of guys out of the UK. Um, and they have a great cookbook that I've put in the description of the recipe. So I would invite you guys to go look at their stuff if you are curious about making any other food. But we'll go and we'll use a couple of other recipes that they've shared on their website and through their books as we progress through the series this month. So if you like this recipe, um, the authors that have shared this with me and likewise others, they're gonna come back. So we'll be able to explore that food at that time. So, mm. now <laughs> I, I can't tell you, I, I think that this is so good. And look at how good that is, Pam. It looks, look at, you plated it well too, wow. <laughs> the the mushrooms taste so good i think i'll just do the mushrooms on their own next time they're just delicious with that glaze it's it's very good i agree i love the mushrooms they're my favorite mm. Yeah, you can't you can't hide how good this is. Like if you if I gave this to anybody that said that they didn't they didn't like plant food, I don't know. <laughs> this is just so good. It'd be very hard to convince me otherwise that it isn't delicious. Hey John. Brian. Yes, this sir. This is delicious. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. And, and then we got it done in 30 minutes. Like that's yes. it's, a simple, delicious meal in 30 minutes. Now, um, I will share with everybody the most difficult meal that will probably, not difficult, but the more time consuming meal that we'll encounter is the Salisbury steak. So just be ready for that. That'll take us a good hour to do, but the rest of the recipes are pretty standard. We'll be able to go through them pretty quickly. And as you see, they're really delicious and quick and tasty, so. Mm. Uh, Brian, this is the best pasta I've ever had. Unbelievable. Well, thank you. Thanks. We'll just uh, we'll start giving it out at the center. Yeah. I'm not, one, I'm not one to like mushrooms, but I love these mushrooms. Oh, good, good. Yeah. I mean, and you think about how simple it is. It's just the apple cider vinegar, maple syrup, and soy sauce. That's all that is in there. Yeah. Now that I see you guys with the result, it looks so good. And I really wish I could try it, but I'm allergic to mushrooms, soy sauce, gluten, and all of this stuff. And I read, I did try to go vegan, like not vegan, vegetarian ones, like a couple of years ago. And I ended up in the hospital because my allergies got so bad that I just couldn't have it. So that's really sad, but it looks so delicious. And I'm excited for the next classes. <laughs> Is there, am I, is there a recipe or is there one that does fit your dietary uh, needs? I think the last one does the, the fried uh, chicken, the vegan chicken. Oh yeah, chicken. the tofu, yes. Yes, uh, I might be able to try that. Um, it does, however, like tofu, it's um, like the, the, the ingredients that they use to make it. I'm allergic to some of them, but I can uh, take some medicine and like be prepared for it because I really want to try that one <laughs> yeah and I'd be happy because um it's interesting how diet how it really impacts everything that we do and I'm yes. really happy to share or explore other ingredients or techniques that might give you better access to more food because I, I know that that journey not from my own experience I've knock on wood I've been very fortunate but people that I've met throughout my life that have really dealt with some challenges around food and not being able to eat as eat what they want ultimately yeah exactly but thank so, you that looks so good congratulations <laughs> oh thank you yeah it's it's it really it's every time I make it I'm like I, this, I could eat, eat this in a restaurant I would easily <laughs> buy this in a restaurant Mm-hmm.
And I'm not sure if any of you are familiar, maybe my friends and viewers that are watching on Permaculture Live know, but I'm actually an American. So I immigrated here about 10 years ago now. And because of COVID, I haven't seen my family in 18 months or, or more. But even before that, I was already on this journey of being plant-based and getting to the the point of where I was barely eating meat anyway, but um, now I've been in a full almost year, nine months or so of uh, being completely plant-based. And it's interesting because I can't wait to share this experience with my family because I know that something like we're eating right now, it, it, it's delicious to everybody. It doesn't matter what you think your background is. So I'm excited to share with my family and say, hey, just as much as I'm excited to share it with you, look how good this food can actually be. This is what I've been eating. This is how I've been growing all of that stuff. So, oh, look at what, what's going on there. Oh, there, oh, that is delicious. Look at the squash in there. Yeah. Is that a butternut squash win? It's a butternut squash, yes. And uh, I'll tell you, it is good. So I just want to let everyone know I'm going to stop recording now uh, so that I can post the video later on today. Thank you for that, Maya. Thank you for facilitating this. I appreciate that. And I want to say thanks again to Pam and John and all of you that volunteer at the center because it is an amazing resource for this community. and. I benefit from it, but I know that you guys do too. And I'm happy to share what my knowledge is with anybody. And so I thank you for letting me be a part of that and ultimately contribute to what Roe gets to be. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, Brian. Mm -hmm.